Welcome, you're watching the NWR Mining Resources series. We're joined by Red River Resources. Red River is building a multi-asset operating business focused on base and precious metals with the objective of delivering prosperity through lean and clever resource development. On the line today, we have Mel Clancyan, who is the Managing Director of Red River Resources. If you have any questions throughout Mel's presentation, please feel free to pop them in the Zoom chat function. Over to you, Mel. Thank you, Laura, and uh, thanks for NWR to, to have us on um, to present the Red River story. The picture on the front cover there you see is a picture of the Thalanga plant in, in Queensland. Um, really a magnificent base metals operation that's been uh, going for four years continuously now. So in, in the start of September, we had our fourth anniversary uh, and it's the second longest continuous um, operating period for, for Thalanga's history. So we're pretty proud of that achievement. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident as long as uh, we keep a disciplined approach and keep drilling, uh, uh, she'll be going for many, many years to come. Uh, typical disclaimer, which I'll you can read in your own time. So Red River. Uh, market cap's about, believe it or not, $85 million. I pinch myself every time I, I say that number. Uh, and uh, at the end of last quarter, we had about $19 million in cash and no debt. Um, the last 12 months, uh, operating cash flows have been about $45 million Aussie and about uh, $43 million underlying EBITDA, which, you know, given the market cap and, and the cash that we had at the end of last quarter, it's, you know, running at less than two times multiple. So really sort of cheap stock at the moment. Um, on top of our sort of great production, um, we've got, you know, lots of near-term organic growth options, which I'll talk about. Um, our basket of metals, uh, basically copper, lead, zinc, silver and gold at the moment, with uh, antimony waiting in the wings. Uh, look, it's a great time to be mining copper, lead, zinc, silver and gold. Uh, we're seeing, you know, great prices, great demand for our products. Uh, treatment charges are are fantastic as well. So, uh, you know, brilliant time to be producing at the moment and lots of exploration options in the business. In fact, you know, the business hasn't had, you know, it's the best period of, of, uh, of growth and exploration options that we've ever had. So business is in a really strong position. Um, we've had five consecutive quarters of positive EBITDA. Um, Thalanga's well and truly delivering and, uh, you know, given that we're sort of at the end of September, uh, hopefully we can report another great, great quarter out of Thalanga. So our, our operations are the Thalanga mine in Queensland and, and the Hillgrove mine in New South Wales. Um, and we've also got a, a, a silver indium and another base metals target in, in North Queensland called Herberton. So currently we've got Far West producing um, so, you know, that mine's been giving us strong production, strong, strong cash. Um, and Lion Town at Falanga is waiting in the wings. So we're getting ready to, uh, to start that mine up. We're, we're still in the permitting and planning phase there, um, but we expect to have it up and running next calendar year. Um, we're also in, on the tail end of uh, processing the Baker's Creek stockpile at Hillgrove. Um, so we expect that to be uh, completed by the end of this month. Then we've got, you know, key projects with Lion Town at, at Falanga and then um, the Mets or Syndicate Underground at, at Hillgrove. So we're, we're, we're getting very close to, uh, to announcing something around Hillgrove. Um, and then there's lots of exploration and, and upside both at Falanga, Hillgrove and at Herberton. Um, so yeah, the business is in a is in a great position at the moment with with all aspects. Uh, with Thalanga, really, you know, there's a lot of metrics there, but um, you know, it's delivering. You know, great EBITDA, and you can see we've got a really strong resource base there of over six million tons at 13.8% uh, zinc equivalent. Um, again, really nice position to be able to produce copper, lead, zinc, silver, and gold through. You know, one all well, you know, one set of all bodies. So, um, really, really strong position. And if you have a look at uh, the bottom right, you can see the uh, 
In FY21, our C1 cash cost was negative three cents a pound US for payable zinc. So, you know, really great, great position for uh, for Red River and Hillgrove. And, and, and again, I look at, you know, the operating performance at Falanga compared to our uh, market cap, um, you know, I'm just pinch myself. And again, we've got lots of uh, development opportunities at Falanga. We're working on Lion Town, but we're also drilling. So there's, there's drill rigs at uh, Far West Underground looking for extensions to the mine. Um, but, and we're also drilling targets around Lion Town too, as well as Lion Town itself to, to look for uh, additional mineralization there because you know, I, I can see us growing Lion Town. So Lion Town is our largest resource. So over 4 million tonnes at over 12% zinc equivalent. Uh, it's really been a great growth trajectory for us. The drill bit's been really kind. Um, and you can see there, most of our drilling is focused, you know, between Lion Town and Lion Town East. Um, so we still see lots more upside. We haven't drilled to the Western side yet, um, but, you know, it, this thing could grow, grow from here quite readily as well, even though it's our largest resource. So really looking at um, getting this permitted into, into production next year, um, looking like an open pit, then an underground. And uh, we are in the drilling program and, and some of the drill results that we've released, we are seeing a lot more gold oxides near surface. Um, so we're looking at opportunities to see if we can monetize that through the Falanga plant as well. So we've got lots of targets uh, in the Mount Windsor's at Falanga. We've got a really big land holding there. Um, and you know, some of our some of our targets are like the coronation. Um, prospect that we've done a fair bit of geophysical and, and ground truthing work. Um, that's very close to the highway reward deposit. So we're, uh, we're really itching at the bit to try and, you know, get that ready for drilling. Um, and again, there's lots of, lots of targets in this belt, um, lots of things to drill. And, uh, you yeah, know, I don't see us running out of opportunities here. And, uh, and our track record is as long as we keep drilling, you know, two out of every three drill holes becomes an ore grade intercept. And, and I think that's the secret to Falanga. Um, focus on the high grade fresh sulphides and make sure we keep drilling year in, year out. So with Hillgrove, um, you know, really interesting acquisition two years ago. Uh, we've, we've done a fair bit of work on it to date and we're, we're understanding it a lot better. And, you know, we're calling it a, a mineral field because, you know, we've, we've stitched up the belt. So, you know, Red River has got the whole Hillgrove field to itself. Um, if this was in WA, there'd probably be 20 companies in our tenements. Um, nevertheless, we've, we've done a fair bit of work on our resources. Uh, two months ago, you know, two to three months ago, we announced a new Jork 12 resource of 7.2 million tonnes at four and a half grams gold and 1.2% antimony. So that's over a million ounces of gold and 90,000 tonnes of antimony. So that makes Hillgrove the ninth largest antimony resource on the planet. And you can see that chart, how we've grown our gold ounces year on year. So for me, um, you know, if you look at that trajectory, if we keep drilling, we're gonna find a lot more gold here. And what we're seeing is, is, is that there's a lot more halo mineralization that's never been sampled, never been drilled, and it's been missed. So my expectation is we're gonna find a lot more gold. Before we talk about that, um, antimony. So some of you may not know much about antimony. Um, it's, it's really a bread and butter metal. So um, it gets used in flame retardants in uh, building cladding. Um, it gets used in batteries, ceramics, glass, you know, bulletproof glass. It also, it also gets made used in uh, military applications for, uh, for armoring steel with tungsten and also in you know, ammunition and bullets. But there's something exciting happening. Um, a company in the US called Ambry have developed a battery, um, which is a storage battery for um, solar or wind. And uh, this thing looks like a goer. Um, Bill Gates has poured a lot of money into it. A lot of people have poured a lot of money into this thing and it's, and it's looking really, really positive. Um, so that's getting commercialized as we speak. And, and we can see antimony emerging as a, as a battery metal. Even though it's already classified by the US and Australian and European governments as a critical metal, um, you know we can see that the 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 the, um, the future sort of 
battery metal used for antimony escalating very, very rapidly. And given that we've got the ninth largest ore body on the planet, it puts us in a really good position. And I, I think it's also important to have a look at that price chart because you, you may not have access to the antimony price readily. Um, you can see it's been sitting there at around about $6,000 a tonne US for a, you know, a, a couple of years, but it's, uh, but it's really taken off recently. Um, you know, to see the price above $12,000 a tonne US puts Hillgrove in a really, really strong position to deliver. And, you know, remember, we can start this mine up pretty quickly. So a little bit of, on the uh, geology side and the growth side of Hillgrove. So the picture on the right-hand side there, you can see um, in red our, our known deposits. And all of our known deposits are open. So, you know, there's oodles, oodles of upside here to find more gold and antimony. But I guess what we're recognising is, is some of those blue areas. So there's really wide gaps in the drilling between the ore bodies and in the halos around the ore bodies. So the lack of drilling and sampling here is just remarkable. You know, modern exploration hasn't, hasn't made its way to, to Hillgrove. And, uh, you know, I'm really, really lucky that we've discovered this thing because, um, you know, I can see us finding a lot more, lot more gold here than what anyone has ever envisaged. So the, uh, the, the, our geology team are currently putting together a 30,000 metre drill program, which I think, you know, will, will be the tip of the iceberg here. Um, so I'm pretty confident that uh, that, that program is going to really um, change the thinking that's at Hillgrove um, and put us really on the map there. Um, so we're also doing some magnetics, some geophysics that's never been done before in the gorge. Uh, so, you know, I'm pretty hopeful that uh, geologically this thing's going to deliver. And you can see, you know, we've got 225 square kilometres of, of, of the belt here. So we really control the belt. So really, um, you know, I can see us adding a lot more ounces here. And, and again, our focus is the gold. Um, we will chase the antimony, um, but you know, it, it, it has to come with gold. So really gold is our, is our main focus here. Um, looking at the, uh, that syndicate area, uh, syndicates, you know, fully developed, so it's ready for stoping. So the site team are currently um, in the final stages of putting together their restart plan for syndicate. Um, and we'll take that to the board hopefully later this week and, uh, and get that approved. Um, but Again, you know, looking at, at a really um, strong position here, not only to, to start production, but also to, uh, to deliver, you know, substantial resource growth. And uh, these corridors that the guys have identified um, hold lots and lots of potential. There's uh, literally kilometres of no drilling in between these things. And the other exciting prospect we've got is, is up at Herberton near, near Cairns. Um, it's really the largest Indian uh, prospect in Australia. It's the highest grade Indian prospect in Australia. We've done the magnetics, we've done the, the IP, we've, we've identified you know, significant targets there. Um, and, and now we're in the process of designing holes and getting access to, uh, to get up there and drill. Uh, look, at the moment, you know, getting drill rigs, getting geologists and, um, and getting assays back from assay labs is, is, is really difficult. We're all in the same boat. Um, and uh, yeah, everything seems to be taking a lot, a lot longer. So really in summary, you know, we're a base and precious metals producer. We, look, I think we're in a great basket of metals, copper, lead, zinc, silver, and gold with antimony waiting in the wings, you know, puts us in a really strong and unique position. All our assets are in Australia. So, you know, from a sovereign risk point of view, you know, we're in a really stable place. Lots of near-term growth options at Philander and Hillgrove. Again, you know, the, the, the business has got lots of opportunities to grow and, uh, and, and, and discover more. And we've got some great partners to, uh, to back us up with, with uh, Glencore and Trafigura. So exciting times coming up. Um, we've got, you know, lots of exploration happening, lots of project development happening. And when I come back to it, stable, consistent production out of Thalanga. So Thalanga has been de delivering five consecutive quarters of, of positive cash flow. Um, this quarter looks like it's going to be a good one as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm expecting that uh, Thalanga will continue to deliver and grow. 
and uh, and the business is cheap. And uh, and they, again, I pinch myself, you know, when I look at our market cap. But uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll keep going, and and the business is in a fantastic position with low costs and great commodity prices. Okay, that's our story. Thank you. Thanks so much for that, Mel. We have a few questions for you. Um, so you obviously have a few projects in the works. You spoke about all of them, uh, but Liontown, Liontown is your largest resource. Do you, do you anticipate that Liontown will be, will be the company's best asset or is there, you know, opportunity for the Langer or uh, Hillgrove to take that title? Oh, the best is always yet to come. No, look, <laughs> who knows? Um, Look, I, th I think from my point of view, Liontown is certainly, you know, our largest resource. So to, to put it into perspective, you know, Far West had about one and a half million tonnes of resource before we started mining. Um, so Liontown is well and truly double that. And it's still open to the west, open down dip and, and open to the east. So uh, I'm quietly optimistic that if we keep drilling at Liontown, you know, we, we may add another one or two million tonnes there of resource. But at the same time, um, you know, we've got so many things to drill and focus on. You know, we've got over 100 other, other targets. So, you know, we're only one hole away from a better ore body. So, you know, coronation could be it or, or the other 100 odd targets could be it. So, again, when it comes to VMS ore bodies, I think the, the trick is to keep drilling year in, year, in, year out. And, um, you know, certainly we've demonstrated over the last five years that as long as we keep drilling, we'll keep finding more. And um, going back to the Langar, there's a question here around when, when do you plan to go full capacity of the mills in the Langar? Sure, that's really when Far West and, and Liontown uh, are up and running together and feeding the mill together. I think um, it'll take us a little bit of time to, to ramp up Line Town. So we expect that to start production sometime in, in the second half of, of FY22. Um, but again, it'll, it'll take a little bit of time to ramp that up. Um, in terms of the plant itself, it, it really doesn't need a lot of work. It, it's about you know firing up the third mill. Um, we've got the flotation capacity, we've got the thickening capacity and we'll probably need more filtration. So we'll look at installing another filter. But again, it's not a lot of money. You know, we're talking about, you know, a couple of million bucks worth of plant to get the plant ready for, uh, for, um, for Lion Town. The other thing that we've been doing in the background is installing a gravity gold circuit into the Thalanga mill, which is ready to be commissioned in the next couple of weeks. Um, and that's, again, preparing for Liontown. Liontown's got over one gram gold in resource. Um, there's over 150,000 ounces of gold just in Liontown. So we don't want to miss out on any of that. So uh, we've, we've installed a, uh, a gravity gold circuit there and uh, hope, hopefully we can capture all the free gold that comes out of Liontown. Um, but, you know, I suspect 20, FY23 will be, you know, when we can really ramp the mill up once Lion Town has, has kicked in with uh, Far West. I'd like to uh, dig a little bit deeper into Hill Grove. So you did mention that it's the ninth largest global antimony resource in the world. Uh, what's your plan to increase production at that potentially very lucrative Hill Grove field? Yeah, um, look, I think uh, we're in the final throes of, of processing the Baker's Creek um, stockpile. So that should finish by the end of this quarter. Um, and, and the guys are putting together the plans to restart underground at the Mets. It looks like we'll be starting at Syndicate first, which is you know, weighted more towards antimony than gold. Um, but again, the antimony price is looking really strong and, and the demand is looking really strong. So we've, we've seen a, a bit of a window in, in the market. Um, some antimony production has dropped off and, and, and you've seen that upward pressure on the price. So we think that um, there's, a, there's a real opportunity to get uh, antimony production out of Hillgrove as well as the gold. Um, so that's, that's what we're targeting. I think, you know, we, we haven't got board approval yet, but uh, if I can use a bit of um, freedom around that, I, I expect, you know, sometime you know, in, in, in the early in the new year that we can kick production off. So maybe in three or four months time, we should be able to kick something off there. 
Great, thank you, Mel. And you did speak about how Bill Gates and the like, you know, big money is pouring money into antimony as an emerging energy storage solution. What's Red River's plan for the antimony? Sure, at, at the moment, our, our plan is to uh, produce a concentrate. Uh, we can produce metal at Hillgrove, um, but we would have to commission the back end of the plant to do that. I think at this stage, we'll, we'll keep it simple and produce the concentrates. Look, we're talking to a number of offtake partners. Um, there's a lot of people interested in, in antimony concentrates and they're chasing antimony concentrates. So we'll do the best deal um, for Hillgrove. Uh, so, you know, at the moment, I've got nothing to announce other than lots of interest. We're talking to people and, you know, we'll ne negotiate the best outcome. Uh, but, you know, again, you know, Hillgrove has produced 50,000 tonnes of antimony metal historically. It's a, it's a huge producer and a huge supplier of, of antimony. Um, again, you know, as long as we keep drilling there, I, I suspect we'll keep finding more and more there. So there's no reason why Hillgrove can't be a long-term stable producer of antimony metal. And a couple of questions here, female, around Red River on the market. Um, the, you know, the market, um, it, it shares have fallen sharply and um, someone's asking why hasn't the market recognized the value of Red River? Um, and this is obviously, there's a few questions within this one. And why would the company consider buying back the shares? Sure. I think at this stage in terms of share buyback, look, we've got a lot of opportunities to grow the business. Um, so my, my first and foremost priority other than safety is, is to make sure that we run a, a good business. And when you look at our track record, you know, certainly over the last five quarters, you know, Red River has is, is made cash over the last five quarters consecutively. So production, we're delivering on production, we're making cash. And, uh, you know, I, I just shake my head when I look at the share price with that backdrop and, and you know, without sort of um, jumping the gun, you know, again, September should be a good quarter for us. So. You know, I look at a, you know, what we're trading at an EBITDA multiple of less than two is just crazy for me. But nevertheless, my job is to run a great business and uh, the business is in the best position it's ever been. Um, as I said in the opening, you know, Thalanga has been running consecutively for four years. Uh, it's never, you know, the, it's, only, it's, it's only ever done that for the second time. So, you know, I think it's a great achievement to the, to the Thalanga team and Red River and... Uh, you know, we're making cash. And uh, for me, you know, it's just, you know, pushing the growth, pushing the production and the exploration side of it. And I'm confident that the market will wake up one day and, uh, and we'll see our, our valuations pop up to where they, they will be. Yeah, we'll keep on keeping on, hey? Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for your presentation, Mel, and joining us again today. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks.